In this part of the lecture, we'll talk about the third problem, which is to compute or estimate the moments in a data stream. So what are moments in a data stream exactly? Suppose a string has elements chosen from a set A of n values, then, and let's say that n i is the number of times uh, value i occurs in the stream. So this i is some, is some index for uh, each distinct items. Then the kth moment would just uh, be defined as the sum of m i to the power of square. And here, again, this i indexes uh, the distinct values in, in, the, in, the, in the set here. Now to uh, get some more intuition about what moments mean exactly, let's look at some special cases. For example, the zeroth moment, uh, which corresponds to k equals to zero, would, would actually uh, be equivalent to the number of distinct elements in the data stream. So this is a problem we have just considered in the previous parts. And the first moment is actually equivalent to the count of the number of elements in the stream. So this is just the length of the stream that can be easily computed. You just uh, increment the count whenever you have a new element. And the second uh, moment would be more interesting. And we can think of the second element as a surprise number S. It, it's actually a measure of how uneven the distribution uh, of the data is. As an example, let's say that we have a data stream of length 100 and we have 11 distinct values. And let's look at the first case where uh, the item counts for these 11 distinct values uh, look like this. And in this, in this case, the surprise number or the second moment is around 900. Now let's look at the second case where we have a much more uneven distribution. And so this is the item counts for, uh, for the 11 distinct values. So we can see that it's much more uneven. And if we calculate its surprise number of second moment, we can see that it's actually more than 8,000. It's, it's much, much more than the previous case. So basically this second moment or the surprise number is actually a very good estimate or very good measure of how uneven the distribution is. And this is basically why we want to estimate the moment uh, in a data stream efficiently. And usually to estimate uh, the moments in a data stream, we can use uh, the AMS method. And the nice thing about the AMS method is that it works for all the moments, or the first moment, second moment, third moment, et cetera, et cetera. And it also gives an unbiased estimate. And in, in this part of the lecture, we'll first focus on the second moment, which is the surprise number S. So basically in the AMS method, we'll first pick and keep track of many variables S. For example, let's say uh, for each variable S, we will store uh, the key of this variable and the value of this verb. And here specifically, the key corresponds to uh, the ID of the item. Let's say it corresponds to the item I. And the value corresponds to the count of item I. So basically how many times uh, this item I has appeared in the data stream. Now, uh, note that this is actually require uh, a count in the main memory. So the number of axes is, is limited. And remember our goal is to compute the surprise number or the second moment, which is the sum of m i squared. So i is the number of uh, distinct items or distinct values in the data stream. So the next question is uh, with this definition of variable, how do we set the value and the key of the variable exactly? And how do we use this key and value uh, to estimate the second moments of the data stream. To do this, let's first assume that the stream has length n, which um, in, in this, this assumption we're gonna relax later. Um, and after assuming we have a length a, we're gonna pick some random time t. Remember that t has to be smaller than n uh, to be meaningful. And we'll pick some 
a random t to stop. And, and again, this, this random t, it's equally likely. For example, we can pick here, or we can pick here, or we can pick here. It's all equally likely. And let's save that at time t. The string happens to uh, have an item i. And, th and if this is the case, then we will set the key of this variable to i. And then we're going to maintain a counter c uh, to count the number of item i's in the data stream, starting from this chosen time t. So basically, we're going to set uh, the value of this counter c uh, as the value uh, of this random variable x. Right. And, and then the ms method basically says that we can estimate uh, the number, the second moment of this, of this data stream uh, using the function fx, where x is actually the random variable. And the, this fx is defined as n times 2c minus 1. Remember that c is the value of this, of this random variable, and n is the total number of elements we have seen so far. This is the length of this string. And note that we, we can also keep track of multiple random variables, so multiple axes, and we can have our final estimate as the average of all these, all these f axes. Now let's let's next analyze why this is a good idea. Why can we estimate the second moment of the data stream using this function n times two c minus one? Why why is why is this a reasonable thing to do? Specifically, we're going to prove that this this estimate is actually an unbiased estimate of the second moment of the data stream. And by unbiased, what we mean is that if we take the expectation of this estimate, it will be exactly the same as the true value. And in this case, the true value is the true value for this second moment, which is the sum of uh, mi squared. And to do this, we need to first define a, uh, an auxiliary variable. We, we would need to first define a variable called c sub t. And this is the number of times uh, item at time t appears from time t onwards. For example, let's say that we have this data stream. Uh, we, uh, the, the processor will, will read this data stream from left, from left to right. Then, then if we, if we happen to pick, uh, if we happen to pick, pick t to be this timestamp, uh, this timestamp is one, then basically C1 would be equal to MI. And MI, what's MI here? MI is the, uh, is the total number of item A in the whole stream. And similarly, if we, if we happen to pick this timestamp, which is timestamp two, then the corresponding C2 would be MI minus one. We can see that, uh, Basically, C2 means that how many times this item A has occurred starting from this time point, right? Since, since in total we have, a, we have M, M8 items, and then starting from this point, uh, we will have a total of uh, M8 minus one item A's. Yeah. Then the next step is to calculate the expectation of our estimator here. So let's, let's do this. Uh, the expectation of this estimator will be just the average of, of all the different n times two c t minus one. Why do we have this n, n terms here? Remember that previously we say that we, we need to, uh, uh, to pick this random variable as we need to randomly pick a timestamp t, right? And, and this, timestamp t, it, it's picked uh, uniformly at random. Therefore, any timestamp t can be picked uh, equally likely. Therefore, we need to take the average of all these different timestamp t. So for example, if t, t equals to one and it corresponds to uh, the estimate when we pick this as the, as the random variable, and the t 
t equals to two, then it corresponds to, we pick this one as the random variable, et cetera, et cetera. And then if we expand, if we expand this, uh, this n terms and we reorganize it by grouping, uh, by grouping them, by grouping them by, ex, uh, by this distinct items, where we can write this equation as follows. So basically this, this I here is just uh, to index the, the set of distinct items. We can see that this first term actually corresponds to time t when the last item I is c. And this second term here, this, this second term here is corresponding to the time t when the second last I is c. So three is actually two times two times two minus one, right? And one is two times one minus one. So specifically, you can you can say that um, if we if we say that this item i is actually item a, then this first term here actually corresponds to when you happen to pick this timestamp. We can see that this timestamp, uh, the C a is equal to one, which is here, right? And, and then what we can do next is that we can, we can just add up all these terms and we, we will find that the sum of this one plus three plus five all the way to two times uh, mi minus one, it actually add up to exactly mi, mi square. What does this mean? This means that we can actually uh, have a expression for the, for the expectation of fs. So the expectation of fs is actually exactly uh, the same as uh, the uh, one over n times the sum of n times mi m i squared. So this is exactly the same as our second moment, right? This is if we if we cancel out this one over n and we get exactly this, which is the second moment or or what we call the surprise surprise. Therefore here we already prove that um, our estimate is a unbiased estimate for the second moment. And again, this proof still works if, if we use multiple random variables and take the average because they are independent. Now, another question of course is how to estimate higher order moments, right? Uh, previously we have discussed how to estimate the second moments, but how about the third moment or the fourth moment? In general, for estimating the kth moment, we essentially only, uh, need to use the same algorithm, but we need to change the, the function, which is to change the estimate. Uh, specifically for k equals to two, remember we are using the function n times two c minus one. And for k equals to three, what we use is another function, which is n times three c square minus three c plus one, right? Um, why is this the case? Why, why, where does this whole equation come from? Uh, remember that for k equals to two, we have, we, we have to do this summation of one, one plus three or plus five uh, all the way to two times mi minus one, right? And we can, we can see that this is actually uh, the sum of all the terms 2c minus one. And the 2c minus one happens to be uh, the difference between c square and c minus one square. And this is actually why, this is actually why when we add up all the terms, it can, it, it can come up with this uh, very nice, nice form because all this, a lot of the squares are actually, are actually canceled out and we are left out we're left with only one term, which is m squared. Then similarly for a equals to three, instead of using c, uh, c squared minus c minus one squared, we will be using c cubed minus c minus one cubed, which is exactly uh, the same as three times c squared minus three c plus one. So this is where this equation comes from. And in general, if we want to estimate a case moment, we can have, we can have this estimate 
which is n times c to the power of i uh, minus c minus one uh, to the power of k. And this is the general estimate. And, and all the other algorithm still remains the same. Yeah. And remember that we mentioned in practice, we actually we will compute the a function of this variable as n times two c minus one. We can compute it for many variables as, as you can fit uh, in the memory. And we will compute the average of them such that we can have a, a better estimate, basically a more accurate estimate of the second moment. Now the problem is in practice, the data stream actually never ends, right? And remember previously, we assumed that there was a number n that we can use and the number of the positions uh, in the stream. But real streams, it goes, it goes forever. And, and n is a variable and the number of inputs, uh, and n is a variable that shows the number of inputs seen so far. So how do we do this? Remember that um, this variable x has, has n as a factor when, you, when we're estimating the second moment, right? And suppose we can only uh, have have space to store k counts. So basically we can store only k variables. So basically we can store like k values and, and, and k keys. Therefore we must throw some access out as time goes on, right? So how do we do this? The objective uh, is that we each starting time t would be selected with equal probability. So basically we, each starting time t will be selected with probability uh, k over n. How do we do this? You may have noticed that the solution is actually very similar to what we have discussed before, what we call the reservoir sampling or fixed size sampling. So it's the same as before. For the first k times, we'll just, we will just choose, choose them directly and use them as uh, the k variables. And after that, when a new, new element for example, the nth element arrives, we will choose it with probability k over n, right? We basically will flip a coin to, uh, to see if we are gonna choose it or we're or, or we gonna discard it. And if we do choose it, then we don't have enough space. So basically we need to fill one of the previous stored variables out with equal probability. And this is actually very similar. Uh, to the reservoir sampling approach. So in general, if we want to handle an ongoing never-ending stream, the algorithm that we use will be, will be the MS method plus the reservoir sampling approach that we mentioned in the previous parts.